we're talking about intermolecular forces. So we're going to identify ion-ion, H-bonds, dipole-dipole, and London dispersion forces. So as the name implies, we're going to, well, we're starting with ion-ion, and as its name implies, we would predict that this involves ions. So that's the first example I've got over here. So in intermolecular forces, this is different than intra. Inter means between. Intra means within, like intramural sports. So in ion ions, that means we've got compounds with ionic bonds interacting because of their difference in charges. So these line up, these different molecules. So we see the bond maybe right here between Na and Cl. And then it can align up any which way, NaCl. So that this positive from the Na lines up with this negative from the Cl. There we go. And here we have our ion, ion, intermolecular force. And we typically draw these with dotted lines because they're not as strong as the actual intramolecular force, the bonds within. So this is an ionic bond. And here's our ion-ion molecule-to-molecule interaction. So if it's got ionic bonds, it's for ion-ion. Okay, and these are listed in order of strength from strongest here all the way down to the weakest one here. Okay. Okay, so the next strongest one is hydrogen bonds. So I abbreviate those H bonds. And again, those would occur between molecules. And as the name implies, you know it's going to be involving hydrogens. So this specifically in covalent molecules, so all the other examples are covalent. If it's ionic, it uses ion, ion. So in this covalent molecule, we've got a polar bond here between the oxygen which is electronegative, and the hydrogen. And so when this polar bond with this polar hydrogen interacts with another electronegative element, another electronegative atom as part of this molecule, that makes a special bond called a hydrogen bond or an H bond. So that's a polar bond involving and H. Okay, so and we can see that over here and this molecule of course is water and so these types of H bonds actually give water its really really strong properties because it's kind of like Velcro. Each individual one isn't going to add a lot of strength, it's not going to add a lot of value, but when you add it up over an entire pool and you go ahead and jump on in there, you get a big old belly flop and it hurts a lot because all of these you know, weak intermolecular forces are adding up over the entire pool. So having these intermolecular forces, these would be the strongest ones. These would be the next strongest. And having all of them throughout your body, and we also see hydrogen bonds in DNA. We also see them in proteins. It makes these molecules actually ex extremely stable, but we can still, especially in DNA, unzip those in order to perform replication. Okay, so H bonds. Next up, dipole-dipole. And so this one's kind of like a more difficult one to remember because it's not necessarily in there. This still involves a polar covalent bond because we see this bond between chlorine, which is electronegative, and carbon, which is really not. Polar covalent bond. This does not involve an H. So when we see molecules like this, what's going to happen is that the chlorine, being electronegative, is going to make is, is going to pull some of those electrons towards itself and end up being slightly negative. And the carbon's going to be slightly positive, and this distribution in charge means that it can line up next to something else that's slightly positive just like in the ionic, but this is full charge. This is partial, so it's a little bit weaker. Um, so we could see this interacting with something else that has a slightly positive charge, which I ran out of room. I can't draw it here. Forgive me. Okay. So this would be dipole, dipole. Because of these dipole, this polar bond.
Okay, and last, here we see a whole bunch of nonpolar covalent bonds. So between carbons and hydrogens, they don't have a huge difference in electronegativity. And so in these types of molecules, what happens is an induced dipole. So at some point, the electrons will be heavier on one side than on the other side of this bond, or vice versa. Right, so it's an even slightlier uh, shift. And it's extremely temporary and extremely fleeting. But, and when this happens, then the next molecule over, because these bonds really aren't very polar at all, this is going to induce a dipole over here that's slightly positive and make this bond slightly negative. So this is extremely weak um, on this scale. We call that London dispersion forces, um, also known as van der Waals forces. And that's really between in nonpolar covalence, between other nonpolar covalents. And so these the way that molecules interact with each other is extremely important, especially for nurses, especially when we consider how our bodies are put together. We need to understand DNA and proteins. And when we're looking at medicines, looking at all these intermolecular forces, the rule is molecules have to have similar intermolecular forces in order for them to be soluble in, to, in each other, in order to dissolve with each other. So because water is polar, it can dissolve ion, ion, it can dissolve this, it can dissolve this, but it will not dissolve nonpolar covalence because this is a different intermolecular force. What can dissolve nonpolar covalence is other nonpolar molecules. That's why oil and water do not mix.